Hey guys, welcome back to Life Unchained. Today we're gonna to be doing a quick video on our new string we just installed using tilt brackets and commercial EMT for a professional install. Stay tuned for the quick video, guys. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. All right, guys, we got the the roof cleaned up where we're putting the uh, the additional panels there, and uh, just unloaded the truck. So now we need to get these back over in the shade there and to get to working on them. It's too hot to do this on the roof today, so we got to get these uh, this 2400 watts unpacked. Uh, got to get them tested. Make sure you put them in the solar panel in the light um, and full sun and test them before you actually install them on the roof. Uh, the last thing you want to do is have to uninstall something. So I'm going to get them over here in the sun, get them tested, and then we're going to get them back over there in the shade and start installing the brackets. We're not actually going to install the standard brackets that uh, everybody's doing. Um, we're actually installing the tilt brackets. So these are quite a bit more expensive, but uh, they are well worth it. They actually uh, allow the solar panels to tilt up into the uh, the different degrees. So if you're, uh, you know, at, at dusk you're boondocking or something, or it's winter time, you can actually tilt and get 22 degrees or something like that, and get 20% uh, or so better uh, solar light, better uh, wattage coming to the panels. So, all right, let me get these unboxed, guys. I'll get these tested and then uh, get all this stuff on the roof. And then uh, we'll start putting the brackets together, and then when it gets cooler, we'll start installing the, the panels on the roof. All right, stay tuned, guys. All right, guys, here we are in the in the shade installing the uh, tilt brackets. We went and tested the panels, so they're all coming out okay. And uh, here's the tilt brackets I was discussing earlier. So we're bolting these up. These are five sixteenths. So you gotta open the holes just a little bit. Uh, just a hair, it's like 30 seconds off, so just run a 5 sixteenths backwards and you'll be fine there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the rest of these uh, tilt brackets installed and then uh, we'll see you back up on the roof. Alright guys, here we are back on the roof, got everything cleaned up. We have our panels uh, laid out the way we want them. Uh, I use a tape as my straight edge. Um, they call me Eagle Eye, so that's that's kind of my purview. But you, uh, I recommend you use a string uh, or something quite long to make sure all your panels are lined up. Uh, last thing you want is is to see a bunch of panels kind of cattywampus uh, going down the uh, downing the top of the RV. It's going to look bad. So if we have everything lined up and spaced off the way we want it, um, so we're going to start tacking these things down. Already start tacking them down getting the screws set. Uh, here's one that we haven't screwed off yet. I wanted to show you guys. This has a gasket material underneath it. Uh, unlike the, uh, the cheap brackets that come, uh, or not come, but everybody else installs. And so uh, you don't want to be using die core underneath this, guys. You can't use multiple gasket materials. Uh, it's going to cause issues. And so uh, what we're going to do here is we drive our screws. Uh, we'll back those out. We'll pump die core throughout, in the, throughout into the top of the TPO, overfill this. Uh, EPDM depends what you have and then we'll drive our screws back down and then we'll use the die core again as a cap seal coming around there to make sure that it's water resistant it will be watertight none of this is it's die core uh, but it'll be water resistant and then uh, we have this uh, these spaced off uh, two and five eighths and a, a pro tip guys make sure that you have this accurate uh, RV roofs are not uh, they're notoriously kind of they shift off here and there but make sure you have good distance here and it looks clean coming down the roof um, as that's going to be noticeable the smaller the reveal the more noticeable noticeable uh, the misalignment may be so in this case we have everything we want it so we're going to have starting to screw things down uh, these brackets come with uh, these cheap uh, tech screws i don't recommend using these guys um, especially not an OSB through a TPO roof, this is gonna pull straight out. Uh, so, and these come with the 
solar uh, bracket till brackets and this is quite too long you don't want to be pinching a, uh, a three inch screw uh, through the roof you have ducting you have wires uh, you actually sometimes you even have uh, pecs running through here so you do not want to be puncturing the roof with this so uh, we went out and got our own uh, inch and a half screws and make sure that uh, they do have the head on them uh, with the washer for the cap seal to prevent any water kind of going through down there through uh, the hole. We're going to put Dicor on there, but still you want to make sure you have a good seal, guys. So make sure you're using Dicor and you're just not screwing to the roof. Uh, we don't, I don't like these brackets. Uh, these tilt brackets are a bit more expensive, uh, but uh, they will do, they, they're, they're heavy duty, as you can see, and they do a good job, um, especially tilting um, when you have coming in the evening and you need additional solar. Um, or it's winter time and you have the sun off you can lift them up 20 degree angle I think it's up to 45 degrees but we redesigned these uh, to lay flat as you can see uh, this is not normal so we uh, drill some holes and screw those off and drill some more additional bolts there so uh, coming up through here uh, we're gonna be running EMT just like you see over here for the existing panels so we'll be punching, punching through here with EMT, and uh, this one will have the the junction uh, with the watertight seal uh, for the uh, EMT to three quarter. That's going to penetrate through here. We have to replace this existing EMT since it's half inch, like we did on this side with three quarter. Uh, we have additional wires coming back through here now for the additional panels that we're installing. And so the half inch EMT will no longer cut it. So three quarter EMT will come through here. So we'll have to replace these brackets with a three quarter EMT bracket. And uh, we will also have to, to remove this from the combiner box and uh, uh, install the uh, three quarter inch EMT through here. So we'll have to drill that out uh, carefully. I don't want to detach this from the roof. And then uh, we'll uh, run our new wire in here. And then uh, this is 10 gauge coming through. PV and then this is eight number eight going down to the MPPT charger or in this case our grow watt inverter uh, do not run I, I don't recommend you run 14.2 or you know uh, a 10.2 or any Romex down through here we should be using PV wire or at least thin stranded wire uh, DC current's a bit different it runs on the, on the skin of the copper and not necessarily through the copper uh, as AC current would. So I don't recommend using Romex down through here. I still recommend you use PV cable going down to your MPPT -T charger uh, uh, or at least a thin-stranded uh, uh, wire uh, for DC running down to your MPPT charger and or your breaker first and then your MPPT charger. Uh, also make sure you guys fuse this stuff uh, because you have you know through almost 3,000 watts coming in and you have um, pa uh, panels run in parallel and or series parallel um, parallel series um, it depends how you want to set them up all in parallel uh, all in series or parallel in series like we have them um, it creates a lot of amperage and uh, if something were to fail you can actually back feed one of these panels with the higher amperage and actually cause a fire um, so make sure you guys are fusing your your PV wire um, wherever you can, especially before you connect your series or your parallel series branches uh, to your combiners, right? So that's the point where you need to fuse your wire. In this case, we're running 15 amp fuses. So that's very important, guys. Especially, I don't recommend you guys use panels. If you guys are installing new panels, especially on RV, it's a tinder box. Um, don't want to be uh, too frank, but... Uh, they're used, they're exposed to weather, the vinyl on the backside could be worn, it, you could add water penetration and corrosion and more chance of causing issues, right? So make sure you guys get uh, new panels. I know it costs more, but make sure you get new panels for your RV install. If you guys want to have those out somewhere else, um, that's fine, but I don't recommend that personally. So yeah, that'll be it guys. We'll run this uh, new EMT. We'll have to lift the, these tilt panels here, run our new EMP, EMT through there, and uh, get this all screwed off and get these capped with die core, and then uh, we'll uh, do our wiring for our PV. Uh, also another pro tip, make sure you guys are keeping the cardboard for the panels so you can cover the panels um, before you connect the, uh, um, 
the connection port so you don't want to be uh, short shorting any diodes out or anything like that uh, one of the reasons we go with EMT guys is you don't want to be, you know, if you phone over ERV for a while, you'll know that you hit branches and stuff like that. And I've heard horror stories where guys rip out the wire, your PB wire, and it actually does damage um, because it shorts, shorts together. And so you actually blow out your MPPD charger, which is expensive. Also, you can destroy the diodes uh, um, on your solar panel. So that's the reason we run the commercial install for the, uh, the EMT. It looks clean. Uh, you don't have any exposed wires, even though it is PV wire, it is uh, written for the elements. Uh, so that's that's part of the install, guys. We're going to go ahead and get this all screwed off, get the die core and uh, cap seal everything. And then again, we will uh, jump to our PV combiner box. All right, guys, we have everything tacked off and lined up. I think it came out fairly well. Looks pretty clean. Uh, we went ahead and tacked everything off. Everything screwed down. We went ahead and ran our, our half-inch EMT coming through half inch EMT and here we have our, our junction between our half inch and two or three quarter for the additional string that's coming through and uh, again as I said earlier we had to bore this out this was a half inch before so we want to use the one inch hole saw drill that out and uh, we used a piece of wood behind there because it was already a half inch hole we didn't want to move off center of that hole and we didn't want to move the uh, combiner box from the roof it's already die cord down so that came out really well got everything tightened off we went and tested everything and it came out pretty pretty well guys uh not too much sun right now the wind's kind of kicking up too uh so we're gonna go ahead and jump downstairs and uh see what uh, additional watts we're pulling uh from the uh the grow watt uh stay tuned let me jump down there all right guys here we are back downstairs in the front storage with our power wall and our 6,000 watt split phase inverters. And uh, looks like we're pulling 1.8 kilowatts and 400 watts there. So that's pretty good for the, uh, the weather conditions right now. The wind's kicked up as you, I'm sure you heard and the clouds have kind of rolled in, but uh, uh, we'll do some more additional testing um, as we go. And uh, we also have that, um, the, uh, the front um, or the center aisle, we're gonna install a few panels there. We're gonna have a, a, a new tilt up system for that so we can actually walk by there. So uh, yeah, got some more uh, unique things to come guys and I appreciate you uh, sticking around. And uh, we have uh, some videos to come on these grow lot inverter installs and the uh, power wall install. That thing was a beast to get in there, but uh, they call it a gorilla. But uh, thanks again, guys, and uh, we, uh, we appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. And uh, more videos to come. Don't forget to subscribe. All right, talk to you guys later. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe.